Dr. Jen Cottle, family physician and associate professor at Rowan University. Dr. Cottle, good to have you back on the show. How concerned should we be at this point about this variant causing another surge for us here in the U.S.? Right. So we definitely are seeing increases of BA2 in terms of uh, the percentage of, of total new cases. Right now, it's estimated that of new cases, BA2 is about 35 percent of those new cases, and that has increased. On the other side, however, gen in general, cases, hospitalizations and deaths uh, of, uh, from COVID in this country have declined. Uh, the big question is whether uh, BA2 will cause a surge. Uh, I think many of us feel that there may be an increase, some increase in cases, but whether there's actually going to be a surge or not, I, I think remains up for debate. Um, one of the things we just have to do is sort of wait and see. And as you mentioned, yes, we have seen an increase in cases overseas, which does tend to sort of precede what we see here. Uh, so we do need to be sort of on guard for a possibility of an increase. Yeah, you mentioned being on guard for a possibility of an increase, even though we're experiencing cases down, hospitalizations down, deaths down. Do you think that we should be more cautious? And I say this to the extent of the fact that we've removed a lot of COVID protocol across the U.S. when it comes to things like mask mandates and even social distancing. Right. Um, and, you know, that is something very, very important to keep in mind. I mean, this is the thing. We have to remember that COVID is not done and it's not over. Even though we have, you know, sort of dropped a lot of mask requirements and many mitigation measures we used to have have been sort of dropped on a formal level, I always implore my patients and, and, and the public really to do what's right for us individually. Wearing masks is still a very, very important part of, you know, curbing the, the, the spread of COVID-19. And even though masks have been dropped does not mean that we have to stop wearing masks or that we should. And in certain people that are at higher risk for COVID complications, I, I wouldn't recommend dropping masks. So uh, this is really something that even though mask mandates are being dropped in many cases, this is something that people need to really weigh on an individual level, the risk versus benefit. And we all have to understand that, that no, COVID is not over. It is still very much here. Do you think that immunity from those who were infected with the Omicron variant could help us be protected against a further surge? Yeah, so that's a really interesting question. So uh, the BA2 Omicron subvariant is kind of a cousin of, of BA1. It's what we saw um, uh, sort of in the, the winter time when we had that sort of large surge. The World Health Organization released some data that suggests that if you received, or rather if you got infected with BA1 or the initial Omicron is often how I refer to it, um, that you likely have good protection against contracting BA2, which in many ways is very good news. We should also say, or I should also say rather that um, are the vaccines that we have actually protect against both BA1 and BA2 subvariants of Omicron. Now, we should say that the, the vaccines protect more strongly and, and uh, to a greater degree against hospitalization and death, uh, much less for symptomatic infection. But uh, there is protection against the vaccines that we have. This is one of the reasons why it's important to get the booster, though, because that protection does increase with symptomatic in, uh, infection once we get that booster. Uh, but yes, there is uh, hopefully some protection conferred if you received Omicron, uh, like the BA1 version, again, against BA2. Yeah, something that sticks out to me is what you said about boosters. For those who have been fully vaccinated and have received their booster at this point, what should they be doing? Is it time for that second booster? That's a really great question. I mean, of course, we know that um, you know there are companies that are releasing data and and pursuing uh, FDA approval of for a second booster. Remember, right now uh, as we speak, there are some individuals that are eligible for a fourth dose. Th those are people who are severely immunocompromised, cancer patients, etc. So that does already exist. But we're talking about a second booster, which is different. And yes, there are companies pursuing that. You know, I think um, it would not surprise me at all if we if we all needed a another shot or a booster or even some sort of regularity of a vaccination, to be honest with you, almost like a flu shot. It wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. I think what we have to do is wait and see in terms of the data as it comes out to determine when, if, how, uh, and all that, that good stuff. But it wouldn't surprise me if that happened. Really good information there. Dr. Jen Cottle, family physician and associate professor at Rowan University. Thank you so much.